Greetings Petroheads, welcome back to Automation the Car Company Tycoon Game. So um, a lot of you are probably going to be asking yourselves um, what, what's going to happen now that the BJSCC is over. Uh, for the time being I'm going to introduce an, uh, a couple more 2017 AMW models. Uh, and that includes, and that's what we're going to start with today, the uh, facelift for the Eagle. Now the Eagle is a small uh, premium sports coupe, somewhat comparable to a BMW 2 Series, if you will, but um, not really. And uh, I'll go over the, the differences uh, during this video. So first of all, we took the, this body shell, which looks like a BMW 2 Series, and it's only available as a coupe. Uh, the the headlights may seem a little bit busy, but the thing is, you know, the idea behind them is that uh, basically the the indicators come on uh, in a sequence. So like from from left to right, they they blink sort of like what Audi is doing on their newest uh, cars with the LED indicators. So they would go from left to right and. Um, also, the little triangle on the inside is um, only uh, for the those are the, the high beam lights. I think I think that's what you call them. Like the regular running lights are are the outer ones. Down here are the fog lights, and the little triangle is the high beam. Is that what you call it? To make to make the light go further, basically. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, this thing has. Let's go over the the basics of the of the car here. Now there is a couple of things that are obviously the same for all Eagle models, and um, that includes that they come with four seats, premium interior. They have an aluminum monocoque with a fiberglass or you know plastic panels, depending on what would actually be more realistic and cheaper in, uh, uh, in in real life, but as I pointed out a couple of times, uh, the devs replaced polymer um, with fiberglass a, a while ago, like a year and a half ago or so at this point. And as a result, whenever I would normally choose polymer, uh, I now choose fiberglass. Um, it's got it's got a six-speed manual gearbox, um, although you can also have an eight-speed ZF. Uh, the washbones are front, multi-link rear, and they are all available available with, with either a rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. So the base version of the car has a four-cylinder engine. Now, in the in the old generation of the Eagle, the base engine was a naturally aspirated inline-six. And then you would have a straight six and um, turbocharged straight sixes from there um, in three different options. Uh, but I found that that doesn't really make much sense since the naturally aspirated engine is not only going to be less powerful but also less economical than the least powerful turbo version. So I replaced that with an inline four instead. It's a two liter, 180 horsepower, 191 pound feet of torque. You know, nothing too special. Um, Makes for decent drivability, good fuel economy, sort of reasonably low running costs, and gets the car from 0 to 100 in 6.3 seconds. So um, there is that. Now look, I'm not going to go over the all-wheel drive as well, uh, the, the all-wheel drive version in detail as well. Uh, just know that there is one. <laughs> um, and from there you have two engine blocks. You have a 3 liter V6 and a twin turbocharged of course, and you have a 4 liter V8, um, also twin turbocharged. And both of them come in three different trims, in Eco, in Sport, and then in Fun, which is in between the two. Um, because I think that a car is fun if, it, if it's quick and uh, feels a little bit sporty, but also doesn't break the bank on running costs. That's what defines for me, a car that's fun to own, a, a fun to live with. Um, so 
in in the eco 6 we have a three liter twin turbocharged v6 making 225 horsepower 238 pound feet of torque um it will get the same speed six speed manual gearbox of course um viscous limited slip diff we get two, two 205s up front, 225s on the rear on 16 inch alloy rims. That This, by the way, is the same on the base four cylinder version. So are the brakes with vented discs all around. Uh, we have a fully clad under tray to improve uh, drag a little bit and uh, help with economy. Uh, we have four seats, premium interior, standard entertainment. Um, no launch control because it doesn't really make sense on this car and then standard uh, 10 safety Overall this car weighs just 1305 kilograms, which is pretty much on par with the 2 series If not even lower, I think I think it's even a little bit lighter And the eco 6 will accelerate you from 0 to 100 in 5.8 seconds which is pretty good. It's it would also be limited to 250 kilometers an hour because yeah, that's pretty much the standard these days. Um, there is a all-wheel drive version of this as well. Of course, all trims are available with um, all-wheel drive, but I'm not gonna go over them right now. Um, next up would be the Fun Six, which no, which has a different tune on the. 3 liter um, twin turbo V6, which now makes 250 horsepower, 272 uh, foot pounds of torque. Um, it has wider front tires to give you less understeer and, you know, more like a, a sportier behavior of the car. Um, same size brakes and it it will it will do 0 to 100 kilometers now in 5.3 seconds and a quarter mile I think this we've, we've reached the point where we can try and look at the quarter mile as well that is a 13.8 quarter mile so that's that's not bad Oh, you know what? One thing I, I forgot is look at the prices for all these cars because that is that's an important part when you when you're about to buy a, a car like this, isn't it? Or any car really. So the base version would cost twenty two thousand five hundred dollars, which I think is remarkable value. Then this would cost twenty five thousand five hundred. I think more like twenty, yeah, twenty five thousand for the Eco Six, and then um, I think it's always one thousand uh, dollars up for the all-wheel drive version. I think that's how I did it. Yeah, and then so twenty five thousand for the Eco Six then um that's not right this car would not cost 20,000 um wait did it not save the pricings man or did i not adjust them enough 265 was that how i said it for the I don't know. I, I remember going carefully through all the trims and setting the prices, but apparently not all of that has been saved. In any case, the the, the one version I'm going to be talking a little bit more about here is the Sport 6, because it has a more sporty version of that 3-liter twin-turbo V6, making 285 horsepower, 306 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty decent uh, considering that this car weighs actually not that much by modern standards um excuse me
We'll crash. Okay. <laughs> We're back. Um, it weighs just 1,325 kilograms. Um, it has 245s all around, so wider tires than the fun version. It also gets sport tires, uh, as well as a geared limited slip diff rather than the viscous that uh, you find on all the other trims. Um, 17 inch rims. You get slightly bigger brakes. You get an updated suspension as well. And the reason I want to be talking about this trim in particular is because, um, you know, I've, I think that this is sort of a spiritual successor to an E36 uh, M3 in the way that it, it weighs about the same, has about the same power. It has more torque, of course. It's a manual, uh, it's a manual rear drive, well, coupe, which the E36 also came as a sedan as well as a coupe um but yeah the, this this because the ego is like a car that's meant for drivers it's a driver's car that's the that's the idea behind it and it's one that you could actually afford like this thing would cost like twenty nine thousand five hundred dollars or even you know 30 grand or something that's it's not very much like in, in Austria, for example, that's less than a Toyota GT86. And this thing will absolutely annihilate the GT86. Four point seven seconds zero to hundred. And I know what you're gonna be saying. Yeah, the E the E thirty six M three um, had uh, had a naturally aspirated straight six. Yeah, but you're not going to be pulling that off these days anymore. Like with emission regulations, you know, it's, it's that's just not going to happen anymore. All, although, let's keep in mind that Lamborghini is successfully building a six and a half liter naturally aspirated v12 and it's okay with the emissions if lamborghini can build a six and a half liter v12 you know a three liter straight six shouldn't be that much of a problem should it um and also the dodge uh, or the srt viper has an 8.4 liter v10 and it's naturally aspirated so if those don't make too much uh, too many emissions then i have a hard time thinking that a three liter straight six would But in any case, um, this this thing does zero to hundred in four point seven seconds, which is not only faster than the E thirty six M three, it's also faster than the E forty six M three, which makes three hundred and forty three horsepower compared to this thing's two eighty five. And you know, it's it's one that you could actually afford running. It doesn't use too much fuel, uh, and yeah, running costs are a little bit. Uh, a little bit more expensive than on the less powerful trims then again they would be more expensive on an m3 too so uh there is that and then we get to the v8 trims which is where the really good start, uh, stuff uh, starts happening um there's also free trims <laughs> there's an eco 8 believe it or not um if that makes any sense at all Which uses actually pretty much the same amount of fuel as the Sport 6. But it is a 4 liter twin turbo V8. It makes 320 horsepower, 319 pound feet of torque. I know that's not very impressive torque, but um, you know, it's, 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 it's a pretty gradual uh, torque curve and it only makes 0.4 bars because otherwise I couldn't get the turbos to spool up that early and the nice thing about not making you know immense amounts of torque is that well first of all 319 pound feet should still be enough for pretty much anyone's requirements unless you need a you need a huge you know 
truck or something that to tow immense things then it might not be enough but for everyday driving it's easily enough um, but the good thing is this right here drivability 58.7 despite being a manual rear wheel drive car and it's turbocharged so those are three aspects that usually hurt drivability quite a bit in this game but in this it's actually pretty good this being the eco model it's, had, it's got a viscous limited slip diff it's got uh, 225s up front and 245s on the rear with medium compound or compound. Um, it's got the same size brakes as the Sport 6. Uh, interior is still the same. This is pretty much like the suspension setup is just like on the um, on the Eco 6. This will get you from 0 to 100 in 4.8 seconds. And it'll... It'll actually tie the Sport 6. That's funny, 13.24 for both of them, but you can see that this has a worse launch because of more wheel spin, but then it catches up. So past the quarter mile, this is going to be quicker than the Sport 6. But on the quarter mile where it matters, the Sport 6 is faster. Or actually equally fast. <laughs> we, just, we just saw that. Um, this will cost 30,000... 500? Man, why are the prices all messed up? I, I, I did all of them so so carefully when when i when i when i designed this car and now it's all messed up to the point where it doesn't make sense anymore but anyway um note that the comfort in this thing is 43.8 so it's not like this is a sort of entry level sports car that which is you know which is cheap but therefore it makes compromises on comfort it doesn't it not really anyway and then we have the fun six which or fun fun eight excuse me which has a slightly more powerful version of the same four liter twin turbo v8 350 horsepower 357 pound feet of torque and it's got two forty fives all around. Same brakes as the Eco 8. It's got uh, the same interior, of course. Uh, the same suspension setup. And then 53 drivability. You can see that even those extra 30 horsepower did lose us about 5.2 or almost six drivability of course this also has uh, wider front tires so that is gonna affect uh, drivability as well but overall we still have a 350 horsepower river drive um, coupe with um, with a twin turbo v8 weighing just 1375 kilograms Sounds pretty good too. And look at that trap speed on the quarter mile. It's 187 kilometers an hour. That's not bad at all. Neither is the 13.0 quarter mile time. Like, considering that this is going to cost what? Why is the price so messed up? Let's just say this costs 33 grand. Like, what else can you get that's even remotely close to this thing's? around capabilities it doesn't even use that much fuel i mean sure it's no it's no eco car but that's also not what it's meant to be but look look at this thing i have no idea why this doesn't do better in you know something like this i guess prestige is a little bit lacking 
38.5 is not bad. But in any case, we are now gonna head to the second to last uh, trim of the Eagle, which is gonna be the Sport 8. And you can see it down here already, there's an HP version as well. So the Sport 8 has, an, has a more powerful version of this 4-liter twin-turbo V8 with 400 horsepower and 388 pound-feet of torque. It also revs to 7300 RPM. It has a an electric diff. It's got 255s all around. Uh, it's got bigger brakes. It's got uh, well that that's still the same. Cooling is enough too, and. Uh, it's slightly lower and slightly stiffer than the other V8 uh, versions. It weighs 1400 kilograms, makes 400 horsepower, and it accelerates like crazy. <laughs> Especially when you throw on the all-wheel drive, which of course, as I mentioned, all, all trims um, can be had with either rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. So let's refresh this. Uh, and the all-wheel drive split is 70% of the power going to the rear wheels and 30% up front. And this will do 3.7 seconds 0 to 100. So this will probably end up costing something like 36 grand, 37 and a half perhaps. And considering that you can get a car that does 0 to 100 in 3.7 seconds, like a lot of people are going to be like, okay, this is it. This 3.7 seconds, 0 to 100, that's the, f like when, when you're used to average cars or slow cars, 3.7 seconds, 0 to 100 is like absolutely mind-blowingly fast. It'll absolutely like make you rethink anything you thought you knew about cars and it'll make you think dude is it really gonna make a difference whether i buy this or spend more than or, or spend pretty much twice as much on the hp and i'll tell you it will make a difference because this has the same engine as you saw in the AMW Tiger. It's the four and a half liter twin turbo V8 with 640 horsepower, 550 pound feet of torque. It gets all wheel drive as standard. It gets a seven speed double clutch gearbox as standard. And um, because it's still an Eagle and it's still pretty small, it weighs less than 1600 kilograms, which is kind of a lot, but not super heavy, you know, a Porsche Turbo S weighs more than that these days. As a result, this thing will do 0 to 100 in 2.6 seconds. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> oh my god, the the Sport 8 with all-wheel drive would do the quarter mile in 12.1 seconds. This does it in 10.6. So 1.5 second quarter mile difference, that is an absolutely massive difference on the quarter mile. 1.5 seconds is just like, you know, <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. The difference between those two cars. Like, it is the difference between a pretty pretty quick car and a very very fast car this will also do 330 kilometers an hour which is 205 miles an hour 
and it's gonna cost 170 grand but then again what can you really get for the price that would even come close to this car obviously the hp also gets a bulge on the bonnet some some extra vents here and here and a different rear bumper with these vents here and you know the diffuser here quad exhausts yeah I don't know if if this thing is gonna be available as a rear wheel drive because obviously like at the price point you would think that this this car would sell pretty well for for those people who want a really fast car and don't have you know or don't want to spend a ton of money on it this could become pretty much the new nissan gtr if you if you will it could become the new you know supercar killer the new budget supercar killer if you will um and as such i think that i think that river drive just wouldn't wouldn't be a good idea for this car because while well, 640 horsepower is a lot and rear wheel drive would make this thing cheaper and some people might think that yeah sure let's, let's buy the rear wheel drive version but they would end up just killing themselves with it because it's too much power that's my concern there but of course let me know what you guys think let me, let me know what you guys think about the eagle line in general and as always hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you next time.